All right, we got Alabama heading to College Station, take on Texas A&M. So it's always one of those weird games that kind of doesn't matter the records, who you know, who's good, who isn't. It's just one of those weird games where all that goes out the window. Uh, Alabama currently two and a half point favorites over Texas A&M. However, you know, and just lost Connor Wyman a couple weeks ago to an injury. Max Johnson, LSU transfer, has to come in and has been playing for the Aggies. He looked pretty good last week. It kind of changed how A&M's offense functions. They were able to, you know, throw it more last week. I think Max Johnson bring a different element to the offense. Uh, Alabama still kind of working through their struggles. Dominated at Mississippi State. Didn't really have a problem with them. Jalen Monroe still trying to get in the kind of a rhythm. He, I think he had a great game last week. You know, I think just kind of settled him down, getting him ready for the next couple of weeks. But uh, Texas A&M is going to be a tough one for Jalen Monroe. You know, they, he struggled against Texas at home. Uh, A&M does bring a pretty solid defense to the table. Uh, and Jalen Monroe is going to have to find a way to, you know, limit the turnovers and capitalize on the opportunities that A&M gets him. Uh, you know, you can see there, Milrose done three interceptions on the season. You know, a couple of those were against Texas. Uh, in pretty crucial moments, you know, he turned over the ball. Uh, but he got six touchdowns on the season in uh, four games. You know, he didn't play against South Florida or Alabama. Was, you know, kind of close with the, uh, you know, with South Florida. Max Johnson, like I said, made his first start of the season last week uh, after the Connor Wyman injury. Uh, like I said, this game was just a weird one in general. Um, Anything can really happen, you know. We've seen Bama get upset by a a couple times. Uh, it's been it was close last year. You know, Bama had pulled it out by four at home. It's always just a weird game on the uh, I guess second second October or second weekend of October. Um, it's just always a weird one. Uh, you know, if we take a look at some of the you know statistics here, uh, both teams are rushing offense or you know near the. Uh, Mid middle of the pack, uh, Alabama sitting there at 58. I just saw Texas A&M. I'm not sure where they went. Um, maybe they're up here. I don't know. Anyway, both teams are as Texas A&M standing first. So you know, both are pretty solid, pretty similar rushing attacks uh, for both Alabama and you know Texas A&M passing yards. For some reason, Alabama's just not on here. Uh, Texas A&M 17th, and Alabama, I look, they're near like 196 yards per game. They're just not here. So unless I've missed them, I have not been able to find Alabama on this list, but I think they're right around here. Passing offense has not been great for the Crimson Tide, so that that is a thing to watch out for. Is can Alabama move the ball against the Texas A&M defense? For the most part, limited Katie Jefferson in Arkansas last week. But, yeah, they're not on this list. They're near the bottom of the passing offense, uh, around 100 with San Diego State and that just above them. So they'd be 100 and 101st if I did that correctly. But, yeah, I don't know why they're not on this list. Uh, and Army is, so it's not, you know, defining how many pass attempts you have. Total offense, uh, Texas A&M is... Um, 29th Alabama on the other hand is in the 80s 88 so once again it's kind of Alabama might be in a little bit of trouble here um if their offense can't move the ball because it's Texas A&M defense who is number 20 in rush defense Bama's not far, far behind them on 36 total defense though Texas A&M is in the top five so if Alabama can't find a way to move the ball they might be in trouble Bama's defense is top 20 so still pretty solid defense uh pass defense wise a&M is ninth, which is very concerning for Alabama. If they, if Jalen Monroe is not on, their pass defense has been pretty solid against the opponents so far. Bama is in the top 25, so once again another solid defense performance for both teams. But you know, like I said, if A&M comes out and you know what they did, I mean they scored 27 against Auburn, who we just saw go head to head with um, Georgia down to the wire. They held. Auburn to 10. Miami was the only questionable loss, but they still scored 33. Scored 34 against Arkansas, but one of those was a scoop and score, so 20, 27 on the offense. But they've been putting up some offensive numbers, you know, only one time, less than 30 points. Bama, on the other hand, has really been struggling. Only one time this season scored more than 30 points, or excuse me, two times, more than 30 points. One of them was against Middle Tennessee State. Other one was last week against Mississippi State, but only 24 against Texas, 15 against Ole Miss. So, and 17 against South Florida, but Jalen Merrill did not play in that. So, 
if the offense can't get going for Alabama, they might be in a lot of trouble. That being said, I think Nick Saban's going to find a way to get his team ready for this game. You know, he's a great coach. I think he's going to – I think Jalen Middle is finally finding himself in this. You know, he was a big talk of the offseason that he was going to – Kind of, you know, be a good quarterback for Alabama. And although it's been a slow start for him, I think he's going to find his way this week. I think he will do enough to get the win in College Station, whether that be through the, on the ground or through the air. I think he does enough. Milro on the ground brings another dynamic to this offense because he's pretty fast, and a has got to account for the quarterback running. So I think that's going to account for that and maybe open some stuff in the pass game. So I think Bama is going to find a way to win by three. They cover the line was two and a half. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be another close game here in College Station. But that's all I got. Bama will hold on and win, avoid the upset, win by three. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you, I guess, next week for more predictions.